Morning, folks. We're back at it again. Time to go find some leaks. We've got uh, a couple lines here that are reading a little low on the upper end. So I'm thinking somewhere we've got a belly or a leak that's causing a freeze up. Now I am seeing a fair amount of sap in this one. Oh uh, yeah, look at that. That just might be our problem. Or part of it anyways. It's liquid, it's moving. Hmm. So. Walking for micro leaks is not my favorite thing to do. I much prefer the big vacuum leaks because you can hear them. And then I can get to take off like a shot through the woods and go run around looking for them all. But I don't know. Guess we'll go see. Let's see what we can go find. All right, I found, well, it's not really a leak. Um, what I found was a T that was installed backwards. It's a closed end, so one end has got a, I don't know what we call them, a dead end T. And uh, it was facing the wrong way. It was facing toward the saddle where it needed to go, or the sap needs to go instead of the other way. So anyway, I'll show you what it looks like. So right now, sap is coming out right here. Going this way. Closed end goes that way. Saddle is right here. Now, the uh, I already fixed it because you know, gut instinct you find something wrong, you go ahead and you fix it, and then you go, Oh, I should have filmed that. So, sorry, I didn't show you actually how that worked, but um, it was pretty simple just snip it off, take the tubing off very carefully so you don't nick the barbs. Um, cause if you ruin the barbs on the T, you might as well just cut the T off, put a whole brand new one on. Um, cause it was going to, you're just going to cause a leak. Um, cause once those barbs are damaged in any way, it, you're just going to get air by it and you'll be back here fixing it anyway. So you might as well just put a new one on if that happens. But this one, I managed to cut the tubing off without cutting my hands off. Um, very interesting. These curved tubing cutters are great for cutting tubing, not so good for cutting stuff off of um, fittings, which is very delicate work. But anywho, I got it, it worked. So, I won't. See what else is happening here? Okay, actually, it's like 9.30 in the morning. And uh, actually is, yeah, 9.32, look at that. And uh, it's our first sunny, warm morning where we can actually get out here and walk leaks it's been pretty cold most mornings so um like i said earlier so but what i'm looking for is i'm walking by let's see if i can pick this up on the camera see that sap right there um you can go over here and look at the at the end right here but i tend not to um, unless I see there's sap in it or I can't see it back here. But if I see it back here, I just keep walking because that's what it should look like. It should just be sap and it's just slowly working its way up and around as you see. And it's headed for the saddle and eventually to the sugar house. Yeah, I'm not, uh, cause sometimes you can get, what do you call it? A uh, false positive. Um, if you push down on the, the loop, Maybe I can see if I can show you what that would look like. Well, this one's not really running. It's still early yet, and the red maples aren't quite awake yet. They haven't had their morning coffee. Nope, that's not going to do it. That's pretty empty. Oh, well, there's a little bit of sap. But if you push down on a loop, if I adjust the camera, if you push down on it, you sometimes you can get a false positive, and all the sap that's up here comes rushing down in and it looks initially like it's a leak but if you wait a minute and let everything settle out and smooth over 
you'll find it's not. It's just there was that much sap in the line and it was back up and you know. That's the way it goes. And that one looks good. And that one looks good. This line said it was kind of low. I'm not sure why. But other than that, one almost belly down at the bottom, which really didn't even have a ton of sap in it. It was only like a couple of feet long and it wasn't even completely full of sap. So I'm not sure what the story is on that one. At the but I don't know. I'm not entirely certain why this one's reading low. So I haven't found any other bellies, no freeze ups, no nothing really. But rather than make you listen to uh, me ramble on and my snowshoes crunching on this crusty snow, I'll uh, wait till we find something else and then I'll turn it on again. All right, guys. When uh, technically I'm walking that line behind me, but uh, I just heard a leak over here and it was just howling away and then it got real quiet. And uh, see if I can see it here. Show it up. Do my here. Let me flip this around. There you go. There's a leak. We got a tiny pinhole here. Not sure what caused the pinhole. But looks like a bug found it and got himself stuck in it. Didn't think it was warm enough for bugs. All right, let's uh, flip this camera around again and we'll uh, fix this thing. Put my gloves on so I don't completely shred my hands working the tubing tool. what made this hole but it's a nice easy fix that's that end and we'll snip this end off like so hopefully I got a coupling on me oh I do good I got a few of them Always carry spare parts with you. All right, and then we just pop that in. And this, folks, is why I carry around a double tool. I never know when I'm gonna have to do something like that. There we go. That is fixed. Leak is no more. All right. My sister just found a leak over here. We're gonna go see what it is. Looks like it's at the tree. Not sure if it's a hole problem or what the story is. Of course, she had to crawl to get underneath this line. And I'm a lot taller than her. Uh, goodness gracious me. There we go. Oh yeah, look at that. All right. See if I can get you in here. There we go. See that? There's definitely a leak here. And I'm not certain what the problem is. Could be we're close to a crack in the tree, maybe. I mean, this looks like there's a seam of some kind here. Now that could be an old hole, an old tap hole. What's the tree top look like? Looks pretty good. Oh, me. she looks very healthy. Yeah. For a red maple. Well, let's uh, drill a new hole and see if that's any better. I mean, she just tapped this thing in and it's still, still leaking. Uh, uh, let's see if we figure this out. Normally, I don't retap them unless I absolutely have to, but that one definitely looks like an issue. So. I can get away from all the old holes. There's holes everywhere up here, so let's get down in here somewhere. That's a scene. That might even be an old tap hole with a crack in the tree. 
I don't want to be in there. Let's go here. Well, it's all good wood. Um, all right, well, let's find out if it's going to fix it. Oh, we've got our pliers in here. And then just pry. Where's my hole? Oh, there it is. Come on. Okay, already. Zoom right in on that. That already looks a lot better. Yeah, that's just flowing sap, I think. I mean, it's got some air bubbles in it, but that could just be gases coming out of the tree. It looks a lot smoother back here, though. It's just filling up with sap, and that does look a lot better. So whatever the other issue was, maybe the tap hole was out of kilter or bad spot in the tree, who knows, but we fixed it. Now I'm walking along and I heard a woodpecker. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna try zooming in. But there's a big old pileated woodpecker up in that tree over there. Yep, you can just see him. And we are zoomed in all the way. But, if you look down at the base of that tree, you can just make out that we've got a drop on it. So, looks like one of our maple trees is not much longer for this world. Whoa. Apparently I can adjust brightness now. All right, found another thing. Looks like, not this first tree right here, you obviously, has a dead top. But the one behind it is looking pretty dead as well. And uh, so, no surprise, I got no sap down here. None at all. Nope, I got a very, very little bit. How, I'm not sure, because the tree looks pretty dead. I don't know. Not sure if I'm gonna yank it or keep it. Let it run its course, but it looks pretty bad, so I'm thinking of just yanking it. I mean, it's got dead branches up top. A lot of them. Like, I'm not even seeing any branches that would actually carry buds and therefore leaves. So, I think it's probably just yanking some water that's in the tree. If it doesn't leak now, it will leak later in the season, I'm thinking. So, let's yank it. That, that down. Come on, slide. With it doing what it's doing, we'll just yank out the saddle here and plug the hole. We'd rather seal the hole. So I'm gonna kind of get my stuff staged here, ready to go. So that I'm not silicone tape made right here in the USA good quality stuff I like it I'm 
this will keep that from leaking. All you do is you just get one end on and then you just wrap it and just pull it tight and it just kind of sticks to itself and whatever it's stuck on. And then I will take a piece of this black tape and put it over it because the problem with the silicone tape is it degrades pretty quickly in the sun and it'll just fall apart and off it'll come. Put that in the pocket. Just need to do something about this scabbard for this saw, or the machete. Okay, put that on. Get one end down, wrap this around, seal it up, and away we go. Tree has been removed. And I'll worry about the tubing and everything when we uh, pull taps. Like that. Well, I found something else. Been a good day for walking leaks. But let me see if I can get this camera on it so you can really see it here. See how that is like an off color? It's like a yellowish green. Now, I had already found the problem. There's only one spout on one tree on this whole little lateral. Um, let me flip this around, give you guys a good look. But I think the tree's dead. So there's the lateral with the tree. And it don't have much of a top on it at all. And maybe it'll have a few leaves on it in the summertime. But I mean, compared to the tree right next to it, that's about the same size. It has at least twice as much crown on it as this little thing does. Now I did re-tap it. I found a new hole. But that is what it's doing. See that? And a good tap hole shouldn't be doing that at all. Um, and so my 13 years experience doing this is telling me that this tree is dead. You know, we're standing right underneath it. I'll look up. I mean, it just looks totally different up top compared to the trees around it. And usually when I see off-colored sap, that means that there's dead wood. I mean, even the shavings I got out of it when I drilled the new hole, I mean, they're kind of whitish in color, but they're almost yellow. Kind of consistent with the color of the sap that we're getting out of it. So I think we're gonna yank this tree. Well, folks, it happened. I found a T that's backwards again. Let me flip this around and show you. There it is. All right, there's the closed end. That's the opened end. We follow that tubing back. There's the saddle. Somebody wasn't paying attention. They thought, well, the barb needs to be out, except they weren't paying attention that the barb also needs to be out, but preferably, but saddles that way. Open it needs to go that way. Somebody was on autopilot. So let's get this thing flipped around. This is what you call small dog syndrome. We get a bark at every jet that flies overhead. Get it, Leia! Get that jet! Get it! Can you get
Get it? Where's that jet? Get him. Get him. I still hear it. Yeah. You tell him. You tell him. Well, nighttime. Time to check all our sap. That's all concentrated sap. And uh, let's see what we got in the big tank. Hooey! Fair amount of sap in there. That was almost full. It was about a foot from the top earlier today. So we're, uh, we're getting there. Fair amount. RO's just clicking along. Now we get the fun part. Part of the story most everybody doesn't see. We gotta go walk down to the pump house and see what the sap is doing out here. And get the moon out. Looking awfully pretty. Oh, that feels so good. We'll see if all that sap inside actually gets to uh uh hmm, yeah. Oh, see if all that sap inside can crunch down and go into that 1500 gallon tank. So we're basically crunching. Mm, I'm going to say it was about 4,000 gallons of sap plus whatever was coming in while we were, mm, excuse me, crunching the sap. And uh, squeezing it all down and setting it into that 1500 gallon tank um, at about, I think it was running at like a little over 13, like 13.2%, I think. Um, so it's, uh, it's a fair amount. Well, it's getting cold out here. So must be the sap is about ready to stop. Our, uh, my alarm just went off on my phone. It said the remote pump house, that tank is at 35 out of its full capacity at 42 inches. So it's at 35 inches, full is at 42. At that point, it starts going over. So, but if things are freezing up, I don't have to bother pumping it late at night, which I'd prefer not to. It's already 8.30 and things are getting cold. And we already made sure that the pump line and everything is devoid of sap so it doesn't freeze up so that it is usable tomorrow. Oh, let's check on the sap. It's about to get really noisy. Pumps running a little while longer. I'll have to come back down here in an hour and shut pumps off. At that point, it's supposed to be completely freezing. It's like right at freezing, like 32, 33. So, it'll freeze up. Stay tuned. My hot water tank outside is uh, just about full. And I don't want it dumping it on the ground. So we'll close that off. We shed some light on the subject. There we go. Valve broke. Well, the handle anyways. So right now, all that water is going out back to the big tank. That's good. All right, everything, everything else up here is set. Disregard all the giant mess you may have seen in the background. This is uh, excess storage up here. I don't know, maybe someday we'll turn it into more usable space. 
thinking about maybe taking that space above the evaporator at the level of these support posts, putting in a floor and uh, making that storage space and maybe making this part it's over here that is storage space part of the house i don't know we'll see let me know in the comments say what you think of that idea oh boy yeah. maybe at that point i could put a stair staircase in going along here instead of going up a ladder to get up there it'd make it a lot easier it'd be a lot nicer too and then I'm hoping this week's project with that beat up old chunk of plywood door is all going all right that whole chunk of wall there and we're gonna replace that with a good wall and a buddy of mine uh, just gave me a sliding barn door for that wall, wall door over there. He had no need for it. He had added onto his sugar house and got rid of that and just kicking around his place. He says, hey, you got a use for that? I said, yeah, I sure do. Uh, it's actually the, my ideal door. That was what I was originally thinking of putting in this spot was a barn door sliding. So. That's going to be a pretty cool upgrade, so hopefully we'll get that in this week. Looks like we got a couple of cool days coming, so we should do that, get that done, and uh, yeah, well sap tomorrow. Lots and lots of sap. Um, I think by the time I'm done, we'll have pretty close to 1,500 gallons of concentrated sap at about 13%. So that'll keep us busy for five, six hours. We'll see. But, meantime, I'm going to go chill for a while while I'm waiting on sap to freeze up. So, we'll catch you all later, and uh, see you in the next episode.